ever thought to yourself, man, time is just going so slow. Will this day finally end? Or you've been thinking about like, man, is it five o'clock yet? Or is it six o'clock? Or is it seven o'clock? Whatever time it is that you end your day, you can't wait for that time to happen. But in all, in all, at the end of the day, you're still like, man, what the hell did I do today? Right? Like, what did I accomplish? If you've had issues with trying to figure out how to be more efficient with your time, if you're concerned about being time efficient because maybe you're like me, right? Like maybe you just have a certain amount of time that you need to, you need to get so much done and you have an issue because it just seems like you never have enough time. Well, stick around because in this episode, I'm going to talk about time efficiency and I'm going to share with you a couple hacks that I've learned along the way that's really been able to help me. And these aren't things that I read in the book. These are things that I actually practice and thus keep practicing today. And uh, I learned some of these hacks from as young as 12 years old. While my naked fool Fresh out of Ikikui What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. And in this episode, we're going to talk about time efficiency. I got a couple... Uh, hacks for you guys to learn and also implement today so be sure to watch the whole video through to make sure that you don't miss any of these helpful hacks now in this episode you know I really want to talk about a problem that I think a lot of us share and it's you know depending on what time of the week or depending on where our mindset is or our energy level is at some point we tend to ask ourselves man time is going so slow <laughs> and I want us to think about that because there are also times where it's just like man it happens so quick, right? Why does it feel like time moves at different speeds? Why does it feel like sometimes time just doesn't go fast enough? And in other times, time just does not slow down. And what I've noticed along my way is that when you're having fun, time flies, right? When, you, when you're busy, time flies also. When you're busy in the, in the good things, things that you're actually interested in, time flies even faster. And I want you to, to realize how you feel in both scenarios. So let's take a look at number one is when you feel like time goes real slow and you keep looking at the clock, you keep wondering, you know, like, oh man, how much time has flown, flown by now? And then you notice only five minutes. You're like, five minutes? Man, it feels like an hour's gone by. <laughs> and the reason why we feel like this is because there's actually nothing to fill in the voids. There's nothing to fill in that, you know, that white noise, that that five minute increment or whatever. And when, we, when we're in this position, we know we're in this position because we don't have anything else to do but check on the time. Does that make sense? But when you find yourself busy or, or intrigued or interested or you know, you're anxious to actually be involved in the moment, what happens is you're so preoccupied that you don't actually monitor time. You don't even measure it, right? And it's times like that where you notice and then realize that all along, you didn't really care how fast time was going. But because you didn't care how fast time was going, your attention was not on the time. And so when you start to actually pay attention to the time, then you realize, whoa, four hours flew by already? Has that ever happened to you? Like, man, I've been here for three hours. And when you typically say that, it's because you're either having a good time or it's because you are intrigued. You want to participate more. And so that in itself is just a hack, right? So whenever you feel like you're, you're like, oh man, will this time fly by? Occupy yourself, get busy. Now that's probably one of the main challenges is that sometimes you just don't feel like you wanna be busy, right? Or sometimes you feel like there's nothing to be busy on. And maybe you got one of those jobs that's just not as fast paced as mine. Maybe you don't have a fast paced environment where it's just nonstop. And so what if you do? What if you were, let's say, security guard at, at some spot? Well, what I would do personally is just make sure that each, each block of time, and I always like to measure it within an hour, right? Like within these hours, and as you get better, maybe you start off at like 30 minute increments, and then you move on to hour increments, and then you move on to two hour increments. And when you get good enough, you start to block off your time in quarters. And so let's say you work a, a you know a nine hour shift, right? So one hour lunch break or what have you. So then you got a total of eight hours. So in quarter increments would be every two hours. So you got you got the first two, second two. So it's like a game, right? And so you got a quarter. You, you're measuring it in quarters, all to hit a specific goal by the end of the game. 
And when you look at it this way, you start to work backwards. You start reverse engineering and understanding what your path is. And so if you want to get here, then you kind of kind of go to go backwards and say, okay, by the time I reach third quarter, I got to be here. By the time I reach second quarter, I got to be here. And this is what I need to do it by the end of the first quarter. And so when you draw out your plan or at least your map, you know, and you do this consistently, what happens is by the by the time you're you're about third quarter in on your day, you're already starting to plan the quarters of tomorrow. And more importantly, when you start planning and you start considering your time, you start to value your time because you realize like, man, I had a lot of time to get this done. And if I didn't get this done, what was I doing? And you would be shocked if you realize what you may have been doing, whether you're maybe mingling at someone's desk or maybe you're catching something on social media that really ate up your time. So if you add up those little increments, five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 20 minutes there, and you notice that every day you're wasting about a good hour, hour and a half, that's 90 minutes of your nine hours, right? Or your eight hour shift or however long you work. But imagine what you could have done within that 90 minutes. And so when you're in a point or when you're in a mindset of boredom, when you're bored, when you're bored and, and you just have nothing to do, you can't wait for time to fly by, right? But because you want it so bad, you realize just how slow time is. And so the next time you, you are sitting in a waiting room, maybe you're waiting to get your hair cut or maybe you're waiting to see the doctor, maybe you're waiting to get your car fixed, whatever it is, or car wash. I want you to think about you know, how you occupy your time because why I think, why I think um, you know, your iPhones or, or our smartphones are so popular is because it really helps us to kill time. It helps, it takes our attention away from time. And so maybe that's all it is. And that in itself is a hack because, well, I just gotta divert my attention elsewhere other than wanting time to move fast. Because time is not gonna move fast just because you want it. Time is not gonna slow down just because you want it either. But what I can tell you is how to, how to hack your attention so that time does fly, so that time is spent efficiently. And so when you understand that your time is important, what you do is you start to create schedules. And when you get on a schedule, you get a routine going in. And a routine is probably the absolute most time effective thing that you could do. Because when you have a routine, you start to understand how, how things ripple throughout your day. And so like my morning routine, for example, it really does start the day because I've learned by going through the process and you're gonna go through the process every day. You're gonna go through the process today. You're gonna go through the process tomorrow. You're gonna go through it again the day after and the day after and so on and so forth, right? Every single one of us, little do we know, we have a routine already in place, but it's about how we adapt to that routine that makes the difference. And so if you're always late or if you're just always out of time, but then you, you, you know, deep down inside, you know you make time for certain things, um, but you feel like you're always out of time. It just means there's no actual schedule. There's no routine. And so when you have a routine, it, be, it becomes automated. It's automatic. And, and when it becomes automatic, time in itself, you're going to realize just how fast it flies. And then, you're going, and then you're going to appreciate even more and you're going to want to try to do th more things uh, within that allotted time. And so maybe if you look at your schedule right now, if you have no schedule of when to wake up, or maybe you do, but you have no schedule of when to get hyper-focused or you know, when to go to the gym or when to go to sleep, it's kind of just you know, your freedom, right? Like, hey, I'm, I'm an adult, blah, blah, blah. Right, and so you, there, you know what I mean? Like you're on the whim, and I, I don't, I'm not saying anything bad about that shit. If you're young, go do it, you know, enjoy it. But at the same time, if you can't seem to um, balance out your work life and, and your entertainment life, Sometimes all you gotta do is sit back and understand, well, where, how did I spend my day? So really jot down from the times that you wake up to the time that you know you actually really do lay down and unwind or retire for the day. Block it off and say, okay, I've been up for 16 hours today. Of the 16 hours, I did, th I did this in this hour, I did that in that hour. And when you really focus on what you're doing, you're gonna remember to start focusing on the moment. So the next day, you're gonna realize like, okay, man, here, this because you have to be coherent, right? You gotta be, you gotta be mindful and say, okay, well, I'm gonna write everything I did today um, at the end of the day. And so I gotta remember what I'm doing. You know, and so when you go through hour three of your day and you realize that you spent a lot of time just going back on a group text, talking about 
fucking rabbits and kittens wearing hats. And you realize, like, man, I'm, you know, you're looking at the timestamp of those texts. Like, man, I was going back and forth for a good 30 minutes. You know, like, what what was I doing in 30 minutes? Instead, the alternative within that, within that time, I'm not saying texting about kittens or dogs or group texts is bad. What I'm saying is you just need to be mindful of, of how and when you're spending that time. Because usually when you when you go into your day focused and ready your your focus is to achieve a goal so your your best method is to actually what they call like kiss the frog when we kiss the frog basically meaning that you do the hardest task in the morning and so your very your very first i would say at least two quarters of your day you got to focus on doing the absolute hardest things like giving a call back to that bar or for that decline or or going through that one call to get you know get that customer service issue out of the way or going to that follow-up call with that one prospect that typically at the end of the day you would try to ignore you know the things that you procrastinate that you want to instinctively procrastinate are probably those things so pay attention to the way you look at it so if you look at it at any other time of the day you're like oh man i really don't want to do that that's the thing you want to do in the morning because what happens when you do those things in the morning, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for the day. It's like working out in the morning. I'm setting myself up for the day. I'm giving myself the absolute best chance to win. And so you're kind of going about it that way because if you let those issues or those fires sit in on your shoulders throughout your day, no matter what, it's going to be in the back of your head until it's resolved. And, and, then, and then typically what happens is we get so busy throughout the day when it comes time to resolve them, we end up pushing it out even further. And then at the end of the day, when we're about to clock out is when we choose to focus on it. But what happens is we're, we're naturally ready to leave, right? We're naturally ready to throw in the towel and say, I'm done for the day. And so what happens is now we got to handle those fires in our mindset of being done for the day. And then we find reasons to push it out and what happens it carries over and so when it carries over then you go throughout the day and like man tomorrow I got to do that one thing and put out that one fire I didn't get a chance to put out today and what happens is that creates so much resentment because then now you're attaching that task with going in for the day and so then you, you ever had ever happen to you so like right in the morning you think about like oh man I got to do that one thing that I don't want to do and I haven't been doing for the last two, three days or two, three, four weeks, whatever it is, it just builds resentment. It builds anxiety. And that in itself is not balancing your time efficiently because you have to make the absolute best of your time. So your question would be, well, Daniel, how do, how do I become more time efficient? Well, number one, you start by paying attention to how much time you have allotted to achieve a specific goal right and and in order to achieve that specific goal you have to clear out the path but sometimes we can't hit that specific goal because our path is built up with all these fires that we've been hoarding and collecting and pushing out and procrastinating and so therefore we actually go throughout our day trying to find every other thing to avoid besides that important thing whereas if we flip that around and achieve the most important thing in the very first part of the day we have entire freedom now the key is though what do you do with that freedom well, what you do with that freedom is you watch another video at Sales Remastered and you develop the right mindset to get you further than you were the day before, to influence you to be better than you were the day before, to push you further than you have gone the day before. And so stick around because I got more content coming out. I'm, my goal is obviously to help you through the lessons that I've learned and put it in a way where you understand and it's different from every other influencer out there just trying to sell you an application or a gizmo or a gadget. But hey man, go buy my worksheet <laughs> like boo -boo. Get out of here. Tell me some real life event. Tell me how you went through it. Tell me how you gone through it. So please, timestamp below. Let me know what your takeaway was in this video. Comment and let me know if you understand the content on this page or on this video. And definitely share it with someone who needs to see it. If this is your first time watching Sales Remastered, I appreciate you. Please subscribe and click the bell to get notified of any future content titles. And I'll see you on that episode. Bye. Why am I naked for